Yes. Okay. Meeting is. Now we go. Yes. That is green join also. Is there? Yes. Okay. Hello, everyone, and hello and welcome, sir. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I'm very well. Very well. Hello um, and welcome, everyone. Uh, today we have, of course, as usual, a special live and open in Norma's uh, vocabulary, that uh, wonderful term for that, um, that we are going to do live about something different today. <laughs> we are going to practice, capital P, practice uh, to interview Sil. Okay, this is something, a big task for me. Wow. And just before coming, Sil was asking me that, okay, Bina, you have to be, which I feel that, okay, was, was kind of redundant. He doesn't need to say that, but still, okay, he didn't resume and he asked, you can't be like, okay, you, you already know me. No. Of course, uh, it, it is, it is, uh, it might sound a bit difficult for, for other people, but once you get into uh, the way of impactability and the modernist programs, uh, I think that it is going to be innate for everyone that they can acquire, they can be appropriate very much so in, in situation, according to situation where they need to be. Wow. Wow. And also that because because the honesty and self-honesty is a big, big, huge deal uh, in my life, of course, because, uh, more because of way of impactability, it was there, but more because of way of impactability, bonus. So when you when you are in a position of to to ask something or to do something, how can you not be honest with that thing? And to be oh. honest, of course, you can't be biased. <laughs> At least you will not try to. You will try your best to not be, and uh, and for, and completely disconnecting yourself from the previous understanding is easy and becoming more easy for me because. I am trying to apply to not live according to shoulds in my life. Once you start practicing that, then it becomes like an innate to you that, okay, yeah, even if I have to be something completely different, I can be, this is something, it is, it is becoming more natural. That is something, okay, yes, it is becoming natural. I can be, I can be a completely, I can at least try my best to be a complete stranger when it is needed, when it is appropriate. So the task is important and I will try my best. And uh, this is what we are going to do today. Wow. A bit of lowish energy uh, than usual. It's better now, it's, uh, it's better now, it's better now. <laughs> yes, I, I was also, I am also a bit oh. of lowish energy because... Uh, I was busy. It's a, for, tomorrow will be the first uh, day of Ramadan for Muslims and uh, we'll be fasting and a lot of things were happening. The preps were going on mm. in the house and everything. It's a kind of a, like a festivities also. Anyway, coming back to the point and uh, uh, Sil, if you are done with your munching, you can start now. <laughs> almost, 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 almost. One moment. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a. <laughs> um, I had the thing on my clipboard, but then I I helped out a friend while you were talking by sending yes. them a link real quick. Uh, yes, please. I'm almost, 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 almost there, almost there. Um, this is going to be fun to do this interview, good. and and we'll keep in mind, Bina, that we'll we'll we will time the interview thirty minutes from when we start the interview, not from when we started the the, the open, because, you know, we 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 have we, with the interview we wouldn't take this extra time. You know what I mean? You understand what I mean? And almost already here. Oh, my mm -hmm. pleasure, Norma. Pleasure. Yes. Pleasure. pleasure. Hello, one. Hello, Norma. Hello, Norma. Hey, you always give me such joy when you're here. You know that, Norma? It always makes me so happy just to see you here. I, you just you bring a lot of joy in my life, Norma. You bring a lot of joy in my life. Uh, very wonderful. Oh, precious, precious, precious. All right, chair now, public. 
and say to the page. Mm. And finish my coffee while I'm just messing about, wasting time. <laughs> right? It's multitasking. Multitasking. <laughs> yes. We got I got back here. We were busy at the warehouse uh, doing inventory stuff. So I just got back here and had to rush a bit to get uh, to come and do the live. Yeah, you know, so that's why well, we made it in time. We made it in time. So a little bit of waffling in the start to start, but that's all right. It's better than not being here, right? Okay, okay. Let me get back there. I can see the comments. Ah, that's not what I want to do. I want to come here. Hmm. And when you rush, then you make mistakes, and then it takes longer, then you waste time. All right, Bina, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready, Bina. All right. So this, uh, I, I'm okay. sorry. I'm going to call okay. you. I'm going to call you Ms. Sid, not Bina. Ms. Sid. Okay. Okay. All right. Right. Okay. So, now, hang on one second before we start. We're going to start completely fresh, right? So now it's, it's happy greetings, introductions, all that, right? Whatever. Okay. 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 Uh, Norma says okay. hello as well. She okay. says, she says, huh? Okay. Hello, hello. Norma. Huh? Lilu. That's, that's <laughs> okay. what Norma's saying. Huh? Lilu. And, and <laughs> okay. Okay. And you are not going to interrupt ourselves <laughs> with, with all these things. No, I'm, I'm, I'm Mr. Sebastian. Okay, so please, uh, Ms. Sebastian, uh, please do not interrupt the interview with all these things because you will say, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, you cannot. <laughs> yes. All right. All right. We're going to begin right now. Okay. okay. Yeah. Hello and welcome, everyone. Today is uh, another exciting episode we have. And today we have Mr. Sir Sebastian with us. And... Uh, who is, uh, in, according to my understanding and knowledge about him so far, he is a practical philosopher. He called himself a practical philosopher and a psychologist and, of course, uh, and a writer and a poet and an artist also. And uh, and he has so many other things uh, in his pockets. But uh, uh, before before we ask, uh, uh, go into details before, about him, before we ask, uh, I'm hearing myself back. Going. Okay. Okay. So, how are you, Mr. Sebastian? I am very well. Very well. Eager, eager to be interviewed by you, Ms. Sid. This is most okay. exciting. Thank I you. have no idea what you're Thank going you to so ask much. me, but I'm curious. I'm curious. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. It is. It is going to be exciting. I really hope for that. Uh, you are an exciting person. I think. Okay. That piece. This is the energy I feel. You have a very positive and vibrant energy. Ah. So this is going to be exciting. Okay, so uh, uh, we had some some sort of understanding about, you. but uh, other than the titles and uh, and some attributes attached and associated with your name, if you have to paint a picture, a verbal picture of yourself as a person, how would you paint yourself? With all the colors. If I'm going to paint myself, I'm going to have every color represented. And all of its shades and all of its tints. Yeah. So, mm. yeah. Right. so and I will paint myself in 3D as well, if that I could possibly do that. Okay. If, if, in other words, multifaceted. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. I would, if I had to paint myself, I'm saying, I have to say, I'm not an, not the typical individual you might find. I'm a bit more complicated. Um, not that that's necessarily a good thing or a bad thing. Either way, just the reality of it. And to go a little bit further, because I can sense with, you know, that I <laughs> just, I feel that this might not be an answer that's satisfying your intent of your question. So I would say yes, I am because... somebody who makes a great effort, a great, great effort to apply and implement what I acquire and learn when it comes to personal growth and learning. That's where the practical philosopher comes from. So uh, philosophy, you could say, is about ways of living, yes, ways of being. 
and mm. it can be societally, individually, communally, but in, in the case of personally, uh, I take that, what is my philosophy, you could say. Well, I'll get to that later. But whatever it is, mm. right, whether it's doing this, doing that, uh, the key is not just to say I have this particular philosophy or way of living, way of being, uh, mindset, attitude, etc. Uh, to just have it, that's not enough for me. Mm. I've got to be able to apply it. And not just to be able to apply it once, no, to be able to own it and to have it at my command. Yes, it, it comes innately and automatically, right? So if, if, you know, part of my philosophy is to have good character, part of good character is, you know, being being patient, for instance, having integrity is very key to good character and, uh, you know, being disciplined when needed, uh, having that that ability to follow through, having persistence, perseverance, etc. Now, there's a long, long list to my character, uh, the things that I work on and make an effort to apply and implement. And in the past, I have made a great effort to apply and implement to get them to be innate and automatic, but not habitual. Right? That's very important. We tend to, when we do things, see here's the complexity. So ordinary people say, well, you know, isn't that what we all do? We try and learn things and make them our own. Yeah, but we typically tend to make them habitual. In what I am and what I do and the philosophy that I have, this practical philosophy, I'm looking to be deliberate and to have it automatic. Same time. Oh, how can you say that, right? So I want to be deliberately patient, but have it come up automatically. In other words, that I'm doing things mindfully. I'm conscious of what I'm doing. I'm conscious of, deliberately conscious of being patient. It doesn't just happen. Yes, I'm choosing every time I'm choosing. Why is this, this important? Because when we live deliberately, it massively enhances our living. Massively. Massively enhances our living. It changes everything. It now suddenly, again, see, another facet of this complexity. Why I'm painting the multiple colors, right? How am I describing myself? I am describing myself or painting myself as somebody who lives with meaning and purpose and significance. Why? Because I live that's it, deliberately. That's it. That's yeah. that. That is something. Yes. Okay. Now you. We are, now you have given us something. Something different and interesting, of yeah. course, about you. Well, one Before quick point. I one quick point. Just one quick point of correction. You said. You said psychologist. I'm not a psychologist. I'm a psychologist. Mm -hmm. You know, what the hell is a psychologist, okay, you a might psychology. say. Well, I, I, you might not say that, but what the heck you might say is a psychologist. A psychologist is like a philosopher, yes? If you were a philosophist, okay. Okay, before, then you would be, yes, you would be applying into... somebody else's philosophy. I, I create my own psychology, in other words. Like a psychologist, a, a philosopher creates their own, a psychologist creates their own. That's all. I just wanted to make that correction because you introduced me as a psychologist. No not <laughs> before before delving into your philosoph philosophical ideas we'd love to learn more about the journey that brought you to this point uh, like can you share us uh, some key moments or experiences from your personal background oh, that shapes yes. your perspectives and influences oh yes your All philosophical right. journey no, I, I, I would say uh, that I've been on this path that I'm on I came into this life on this path. I wasn't aware that I was on this path uh, from from the my earliest memories. However, from age 10, uh, there was an incident. I exploded a light bulb accidentally. And it, it's a fun story and maybe it's a long story for our time here. But from this, you know, it, it, it's so amusing to me that that was the day the light bulb exploded, but uh, it went off in my psychology. I didn't put it together, the metaphoricalness of this until years later, decades later, actually. It just amuses me that it escaped me. It was such a literal thing. I literally exploded a light bulb, right? Um, and not just that the light bulb went off, but it exploded. Because, you know, when you when the, the, the metaphoricalness, oh, you know, the light bulb went on. It means you got a you got a bright idea, you got a good idea, or you came to understanding, you came to awareness. But when it explodes, you would say, 
well, that's like when you get multiple ideas, you come into a profound awareness. And what happened as a result of that, I became aware of awareness. And through becoming aware of awareness, there was a path to it, right? There's multiple steps. It's a, it's a longish story. So that's why I'm sure maybe another time I'll share that story because I want to relate these three events, three key events in, in the past. And, and well, maybe four. All right, I'll make it four. I'll make it four that are very significant. <laughs> um, so this on this yes. particular event, this day the light bulb exploded. This was when I became aware of awareness and also of unawareness and specifically my own unawareness. And I was horrified, horrified at my mm. unawareness, my lack of awareness. Yes. Then I started on the path of acquiring awareness, not just awareness to be aware of what's going on around me, which was very useful because bullying was a thing. <laughs> And it got me out of bullying. But also, when you start applying this to self-awareness, you realize that you're an income poop. Yeah. And even though mm. I was at that mm. time already, my parents had, you know, I did well at school. You know, I got top marks in class and all this. So I was an intelligent child. Yeah. Well, I realized then that that means absolutely nothing. You can be intelligent and be an income poop mm. because before that, I come to this awareness about my parents, particularly my father was like a brainiac, you know, and spoke seven languages and he's a doctor and a dentist and a surgeon and a pharmacist and a doctor, you know, like and all this stuff. And um, didn't matter. He was still a knucklehead, right? Still an income poop. He did, did silly things. Mm -hmm. So that was very profound, right? And then this, this from that day is when I started working on myself from a point of view of, of self-improvement, building character, applying it, uh, in other words, to not be an income poop and not to be unaware, right? That, that, and then it started as a very deliberate mm. thing that mm. consumed this is, this is my really inner world, right? Consumed my inner world entirely. All right, so that's incident number one. Incident number two that was very transformative was as a result of this understanding of awareness, I studied people very intensely, right? And so now we're talking, this came six years after this. Now, six years when you're a teenager of doing things is, is a very long time, right? I mean, for adults, you might as well say that's like 60 years, the equivalent, right? Because you, you, you have that energy and that intensity and that immersion. And as a result, I came to know people exceedingly well, right? Really, really understand their psychology well. And when you really know people, you unfortunately can see their negative side because in our high, the superiority paradigm, this is what people mostly display is negative behavior, right? Because they think they should do it to, to be in the hierarchy, pull people down, push people down, be nasty, be catty, be snide, be sarcastic, you know, be snarky, whatever. All of the things that are, doesn't make you a very nice person, right? In behavior, doesn't mean that you aren't inside. As a result of this seeing people in this negative light, I tended to be a bit negative towards them. Yes. And I had negative mm. expectations. So on this one particular day, this girl, Therese is her name. I don't remember her last name now. Uh, she, uh, she, she would argue with me for no good reason. Yeah. And I was, mm. for whatever reason, I didn't ever want to argue with her. She, she starts arguing with me and we are in the middle of this argument. And I realize that she is responding to my expectations of her. I'm cueing this behavior in her because of how mm. I had come to see her. I had come to see her as a bit of a not nice person, a bit of a bee, right? Anyway, so, mm. all right. And, and that, that awareness horrified me and it shocked me and it was terribly terrible that I'm responsible through my view of her I was causing her to behave this way through this expectation of cueing. Now, that was a massive understanding in and of itself to understand how cueing works and how we can affect and influence others, right? It all depends on the relative view. You know, people see others, they, they you know, like if you have a bit of, like me, I kind of was a bit in the know, I was a bit clued up, I was a bit more aware. So she took me as a bit of a minor authority, yes? Uh, anyway. 
So uh, this was very powerful. So I had a massive understanding just from that. But the consequence of that was that I changed my life profoundly. Yes, and, and most fortunately, that happened right at towards the end of the, the school year and with the long school holidays, the six weeks holidays, the summer holidays, and, and the next year we were in a different different town, different environment. It was like a different world. I mean, the school I then went to from a very conservative country school to to Beverly Hills 90210. Yeah, and that was the equivalent. But I shifted and I said, I, I I'm no matter what, I'm going to find something positive something good in everybody and treat them according to that and react to that alone and it was another very sophisticated policy of of creating this queuing this environment uh, basically that was the start of nobilia living yes so it doesn't matter what the person was i'd find something okay. nice okay. that is something very interesting and relate yes Two more incidents, two more incidents. I know you want to get yes. on to more questions, but you're asking for major incidents, right? So then I shifted to a positive, love-filled, um, appreciative, uh, seeing this basically the start of the, the nobility culture, right? This is very important. And, and that was a very big shifting event. The third major event came probably about another 10 years after that, more or less. Uh, no, six, yeah, well, but anyway. 16, no, a little longer than that, about 10 years later again, right? And this was uh, the gift of intent story where I shifted my life uh, to living in attunement and, and, and living according to outside influence, not inside. In other words, a living in attunement, paying attention to anomalies and living according to that, right? So this is a major life shift. And this is a long story to explain. We can we can spend a whole a whole interview session on that and that alone, right? Um we've got another fifteen minutes, Bina, so just uh or Masid, just to if you're looking at the time. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Anyway, so exactly. the fourth the exactly. fourth major exactly. incident already are running out right. of time. Uh, uh, one moment. We Please, got uh, you have, I want to answer your question about things that changed me. So that was the third incident, shifting to attunement. The first one was awareness and unawareness, being an income poop, understanding that. The second one was shifting to positivity, love, goodness, nobility, etc. And 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 all of the things that go with nobilia living, or at least a, a big parcel of them, queuing and all of this, right? Creating an environment and setting the tone, you know, capital or nobilia diplomacy started to come into that as well. It was the origins of that. So, so much from that incident happened. And then, of course, the attunement, this was there before, at least partially, but not the word attunement, but living and shifting to living absolutely from outside, not inside only. This was a complete change of everything changes in your life. Everything changes. And so a lot to explain that. And then I would say the fourth big shift was when I started to write the Biela series, right? When I wrote book one of the Biela series. And this is uh, a little more than 10 years ago now, 12, well, it's 13 years ago now already, right? Uh, I, I'd written a little bit when I was a youth, like when I was in the army, wrote some poetry and stuff. But And, and I thought I wanted to be a writer, but I, I didn't enjoy writing. It was, a, it was a pain. I, I really did not enjoy the physical act of writing. Well, it was long before computers. Anyway, so when I came, I got pressure to write and share because by this time now, we're talking about you know, 10, 15 years ago, I had this very comprehensive and thorough philosophy and psychology that I developed. Right? It was really something complete, cohesive. There was a lot to it. And, and I started getting pressure to write it down, write a book about it, write it down. But then I said, I don't want to write a nonfiction book about this because nonfiction books on philosophy, especially in today's world, who's going to read it? Yeah, it's boring. I wouldn't even want to read it. Yes, I, I've read all the classics. I suppose that you could say is, is, is maybe an important event. But, uh, you know, when I read all the classics in chronological order, I didn't get much out of it. So I wouldn't say that's much transformed. I suppose I did in the end, I got one series of works which was very important to me and transformative but it was important because it was telling me what i'd already developed that's why i don't count it as a life transformative event but writing the book 
uh, or starting the, the book, started me writing. And I had to learn to enjoy writing, which was just a byproduct of it, which is a big skill, understanding the psychology of emphasis and habit shifting. And anyway, a lot of confirmation practice application. But what did it make a difference to me? Before that, I had no interest in sharing what I was doing whatsoever. Somebody asked, fine, but none, no interest. It, it's just not important to me. I, I was in this for myself. All the studying and learning I wanted to do, I just wanted to know. Yes, I wanted to understand. I wanted to improve. That was it. That was my motivation. And, uh, you know, I had always had lots of humility and modesty. Who am I? I'm nobody. I don't know. You know, this is what I've worked out for myself. I'm not comparing it to anybody. You know, I'm not interested in academia, none of that stuff. But when I started to write, I was forced to shift that perspective. And I had to start to own my own self. And I had to acknowledge that, well, there's a bit of mourners that I need to own. And this took a while, uh, you know, and those who've known me in the last couple of years, like some of the participants, one in particular, has pressed me on this. Has pressed me a lot on this to say, I, I, I've got inappropriate modesty and humility. Yes. So writing it down was a big shift. But also, the other point when I started to write, I said, I don't want to write nonfiction because you know, in a typical nonfiction sharing of philosophy, it's dry, it's boring, and you don't, it's very difficult to get an overview perspective of it written that way. And and I've read all the major philosophers in history, right? I mean, I did that whole reading project, right? So, and and literature and economics, whatever, right? So I'm, I'm fully aware of this. Very hard to grasp it. However, when you take uh, writers of stories, like, all right, so take uh, Kafka is a good example, Yeah. I mean, you could say that's Kafkaesque, and it's a term. That's very Kafkaesque. And, you know, well, that sort of puts in with that Kafka philosophy. Now, Kafka never wrote out his philosophy. You can't go anywhere and say, what is Kafka's philosophy? You are picking it up through his books, right? He's not writing about his philosophy. He's writing stories. But this comes through. This comes through. Now, I said, I'm going to create a world, create a culture, create an environment and ways of being and ways of living in my characters that represent this philosophy that I've developed, right? So now it's a fictional world, but it's representing a non-fictional philosophy. They implement it. They talk about it. They share it, right? And you're seeing it in action. And the the main storyline is where Biala gets the mandate from from the, the new nobility head office, from admin, whoever was on duty. She gets this mandate to show these delegates who've come uh, what it is to, to, to show them what the new nobility are and what it is to be a new noble. Right. So the story is about her explaining essentially my philosophy. But she's got to show it, not explain it. See, she's got to demonstrate it. So now you've got the story. And this is also very transformative because it led to the world of Nobilia, where all this happens on, right? It's in another galaxy. It's a long build-up story. And one thing led to another, and it led to this massive, massive amount of work that I've written, right? The Biala series, and you've got the Council of the Gods series, and you've got the Young Man story, and you've got uh, also Clara's class, all these associated stories and works, right? Because this is not just a world, it's a universe and everything that happens in it. But the main key point is, it was about writing about it, all of the stuff, you know, coming out, coming out, coming out, and more led to more. And it's the shift in this, right, led to way of impeccability, the, this life change program, and the Mourners Project, which is taking that further. And all of that came as a result of starting this process of writing, yes? Now, so not only are there the, the fictional stories, but for those who want it more in, in specific detail, fine. You know, instead of writing the philosophy out, I put it into programs. You can see my entire philosophy in the Way of Impeccability Life Change Program and the Mourners Project. Why? And how is this a, an improvement to writing a philosophical work? Because it's practically focused. It's not just, oh, you've got to believe me. No, nothing in there is about belief. Yes, maybe temporarily, yes, when it comes to attunement and anomalies, you've got to kind of say, well, I, this sounds a bit fishy to me or weird, or I don't really see how this is going to work, but let me go and test it. 
If you test it, you'll see it works, right? So you're going to have to have that temporary belief, or at least a suspension of belief. Apply it fully and thoroughly with an open mind, and then it's going to prove itself. Then you don't have to believe me, and you'll have it self-proven. But this is a big shift. This is a very, very big shift for me when I started writing, right? Because it led to this last, what I've been involved in, and what we are talking about now, which is our main topic here, is nobelia living. Yes, I'm going to be making these podcasts. This is what these podcasts, my theme here, is not to promote my programs or promote my books. That's incidental. Sure, if you grasp what nobelia living is about, then you're automatically going to be interested in that, right? Because this is a very, very profound, life-changing concept. But you asked the question, what events in my life were major and transformative? I forget the exact wording, but that's what I understood you to mean, yes? And those, those I would say, four events are major and transformative. And, you know, as a result, also, let me just add, uh, consequence, yes? Which you might say is transformative, but... As a consequence of this writing and sharing and, and making the programs, I've had magical people come into my life. Yeah, very magical people. And this is a big deal. Yes, this is part of Nobelia living. When you create that environment, that culture, you can't help but have magical, fantastic relationships. Yeah, can't, can't be anything else. Yeah, make sense? Masid, does that answer your question sufficiently? Oh, I think Masid fell asleep. I took too long to answer my question here. Mm. I know that that's a good or a bad sign more with an interview when they fall no, more asleep. Than, more than sufficiently, actually. <laughs> so, no, yet. Yeah. All, right. All right. Yes. It seemed like, no, no. <laughs> okay. Now, now, no. now, you might say, but actually, man, that was too okay. long. All right. I, no, I, I need, you need to listen now. Oh, go ahead. You need to listen. You need to listen now. Sorry. I, I'm listening. You need to listen now. Okay. Okay. So the first thing is that you missed the, the formal introduction of Nobelia and Biela, and you just, just actually introduce it. Like, okay, yes, part of the story. You have to introduce that. And for that, you need to give me a chance to actually ask you about that. And that oh. was my first, next question. But oh. you actually did that. So this is, sorry, it is going to be again tomorrow. And then uh, you will watch time and you will you will actually mark it and you will formally introduce first the Nobelia concept, then Biala, and then you will tell all okay. of these things because you, it all mixed up. For people who already know, it's wonderful. But for people who don't know, like who is Biala? Yeah, what is yeah, what yeah. she's talking about? Because you didn't introduce her. So yeah. that, was, that was a major thing. Second thing, that we don't know anything about Nobelia. And you start talking about that, like it's it's there. Yes, of course, it's a new thing, and that is something we need to introduce first. So that for that uh, you need a question. Of course, if uh, you need a question, you can. You, not now. We yeah. will. Okay, we are at ten thirty four. Hey, Ramsey. Already. Yes, hello, Ramsey. We are. We are actually here fighting here. <laughs> yeah, well, we have five more minutes. So, what else do you want to know? Just, just five minutes, and and. It, it's already gone. It's it's a done deal now because it's a wrapping up time. So nope, sorry, we will do it tomorrow again for again thirty minutes, and then uh, because I need I need a formal, precise introduction of Biala, okay. uh, nobles, nobility, well, and right. everything, and nobility right. and right. nobility dot org. I I yeah. need that, and I also need. Uh, a kind of a formal introduction of you, who you are, how you started, and okay. what you are doing okay. in general in life. Again, All right, I'll be prepared back. for tomorrow. I'll be prepared for yes, tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow. tomorrow. It's, it's, this is, it because I know, I can completely understand that because the, all, all those things are very important. Yeah. You have to share them, of yeah. course, but, yeah. but share it in a, in a different way. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you want to ask Otherwise, what my mission is? Yes. No, actually, I, I, I prepared a question for you that uh, as, a, as, a, as a philosopher, as, as a psychologist, uh, your insights have, your awareness has potential. Of course, they have potential to resonate deeply with, uh, with other people. 
and uh, it's a kind of it's a very universal thing because as you mentioned that okay beliefs are not required and you don't need to believe anything so it makes a it makes it a universal philosophy potentially so what actually what unique perspectives or or message you feel that you have something to share with which can actually contribute yeah. uh, into yeah. betterment of the in general in universe this is what i was oh, what asking. what's the what what do you want to know right now as the for the end of our interview today that that was the question i was keen to ask you so then you can ask me okay now i lost all my question because you answered that oh. it, it's not like that you can answer that <laughs> all right well to, to to make but what you just said into up. a question i yes. i take the question is what is my mission and I'm going yes. to elaborate on my mission tomorrow, but right now I'll answer in the two minutes we have Yes, better. please. I'll please, say please. my mission is to share the central conception, the central understanding, the central focus of my writing, which is, uh, I've come to call it nobilia living. Another word for that could be That's honest it. living. Yes. That is something, yes. yes. So, so nobilia living is synonymous with mourners living. But I want to share about the world and the culture of Nobilia. Why? Because it is a world not like Hogwarts, which is a very exciting world. Yes, and Nobilia is also a very exciting world. But we can't really apply Hogwarts living. We can dress up in our wizard robes and get a wand, but we can't really go much further than that. You know, I can say the spells, but I don't actually make a spell. Nobilia living can actually be applied yes you can actually become an aspirant and learn the same things as an aspirant and eventually become a new noble hopefully maybe right it's it's a high bar i mean a very high bar but doesn't matter right the point is yes you can actually become the equivalent of a wizard you can become this you can learn it there's a realness to it it's not just fiction yes that's the difference in this and compared to other worlds, I mean, you could say the Shinobi world of Naruto or Dune or whatever. All of these worlds are wonderful worlds, but you cannot really access or apply them, right? And even other things that are out there, you know, there's a lot of stuff you can't do. But in this one, you can do it all, right? So you can bring Nobilia into your own life through Nobilia living. That's what I'm going to elaborate yes. on tomorrow. Yes, yes. Yes, we have already right. crossed time. So, okay, time Time's to wrap up. Time's up. Everyone. <laughs> That's it. End of interview. Thank you, Masid. It was a pleasure being here, and we'll see you, well, tomorrow for the continuation of. Yes, the... tomorrow again. So, Norma uh, and, and whoever is watching us, Norma, Ramsey. we are going to uh, get this. Yes, Ramsey. Hello, Ramsey. We will get back to this interview again. Till right. still, we'll get into this, this food of interview. Yeah. He is, no. he is such a such a wonderful, of course, uh, an amazing uh, elucidator. That's why it is it is a job. It's quite a job for him, yeah. of course. No. To, to not actually uh, get into that elucidation. <laughs> it's become it. immersed. Yeah. Yes, yes. So we, we, we are practicing that. And this is wonderful. No. Okay. No. Yeah, we will get back to this tomorrow again. Brilliant. Till we get it right. <laughs> yes, till we get it right. We are practicing. Yes, indeed. <laughs> all right. So on that note, we'll it we'll was, end things right here. Yeah, it we'll was not it bad tomorrow. at all. It was not bad, but yeah. it was not according to the pattern. That's it. That's the only thing. All right. Well, I don't know what you expect. I mean, I'm just answering your question, so I have no idea. No, it is. It is. It's a time restriction, sir. So that's the problem, and and we yeah. need a okay. proper introduction because people will be new. New people will be listening to you. Yeah. And they have zero idea what you are talking about when you say, okay, Biala yeah. is like that and, and Nobilia is this. So just, just elaborate a bit more about as an introduction for the first time listener and a viewer. That's it. Then yeah. This is what I want. Yeah. This is what I want. So then, then they will like, okay, yes, now he's talking about Nobilia. Now he's talking about Biala. So we, we know that, okay, it's a character. Yeah. And then, yeah. Well, you wanted to know about me first, yes? Yes, so that, but but you actually mentioned all those things in this. That was like okay. So now we are going back from from right. you to that. You are going right. to the other things. Right. So that's right. That right. right. Well, yeah, I'll mention this in the interview again. 
I am what I write about. It's no difference. It's not a separation. I am what I write about. Yes. At, the, at least in the abstract, yes? Yes. There's no separation. You know, I mean, I have some fantasy stories, but in terms of what I'm sharing, like the Biala series and all of the stuff, they're not, they, yes. they, there's no separation. And actually, really, even in the, the fictional, very fictional stories, the underlying traits and characteristics still come through. I can't separate it out, right? Even if I, like, I have no, a story, no. well, all right, this may be for another interview, but uh, we'll just have some fun chat with ourselves now. You know, like, yes, instance, because, my... because the first. Yeah, go ahead. That that is that is something to to pay attention to. That we are practicing for the first podcast. Yeah, yeah. Not the of course uh, in the series, all the series. Yeah. The first needs to be just an introduction for for new people. Well, fine. Let's end it then. You. Let's end the session. We can. This is our. We can chat about <laughs> this with ourselves. You know what I mean? Let's let's keep it just about the interview. Yeah, yes, right. yes, right. yes, yes, yes. So so I need no, you but, to be okay, focused. Thank you, thank you need you to be focused on the interview. Yeah. Like when we end, let's end. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay, okay. So now, That's thank you, I mean. thank you, Mr. Sebastian, and thank you for this wonderful interview. And we will get back yeah. to this tomorrow yeah. again, and we will do this. Uh, and that that was really necessary and needed. Yes, because, uh, yes. it has to be. When you yes. have so much, it is yeah. it is difficult to pick and choose what to share first and what. Ah, it's hard. What it's can come next? Hard. It's very it hard. Is, yes, yeah, yes. It's only so half an hour. This is what we yeah. are practicing. Yeah. So thank you for giving me time for this. And uh, oh, I would love to pleasure. have you again tomorrow. And yeah. thank you so much. Thank you. We'll be here tomorrow. Bye for now. Uh, thank you, Masad. Bye-bye, yes. everybody. See you all tomorrow. And yes. meeting, and meeting for.